club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing Art club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing Some of the time we might do drawing and painting But most of the time we will do painting and drawing Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art club! Hello! Welcome to another episode of Art Club. It's episode 11 and I am your CEO of Art Club and host Olaf Falafel. Now to any new viewers, I think we should have a quick recap of the rules. There's three rules. The first rule is there are no rules. The second rule, ignore the first rule. And the third rule, always wear stripes. Quite simple if you follow those three rules you cannot go wrong so what have i been doing this week ah this week i got myself this thing here it's called parent in a can i'll hold it up there so you can see it you see that parent in a can it's got 20 classic phrases that only parents say stuff like can you please hurry up no we are not there yet here you go if you press the button on the top it says them put that down you don't know where it's been classic for crying out loud brush your teeth Yep. Where on earth are your shoes? So I'm sure we'll be having a few more of those later on. Now, I'm going to put all of your wonderful pictures up here. We had some brilliant pictures. I think the Spunicorn was probably the most popular drawing that I've ever done. Uh, we had loads of great Kahindi Wileys as well. Those are brilliant ones of those. And loads of great name monsters, which were a lot of fun to do. If you haven't done your name monster, go back to the last episode, have a watch of that. It was really good. Uh, oh, also, my own Spunicorn here that I drew in the show last week. One of you lucky lucky people will win that and the name of that person will be coming up around there somewhere congratulations if that is you or your children uh, what you need to do is have a look in the description to this video and it'll tell you what you need to do uh, right what else have we got well let's have another one of these ask your mum so this week we are learning about Jackson Pollock. He's probably one of the messiest painters. You should have a lot of fun doing that. We'll try and make it not too messy, parents. Don't worry, I've got a little trick. Uh, we are also doing a, a fun bit about writing words, like kind of typography, uh, which is really useful if you're doing like school projects and that kind of stuff. I mean, I taught my kids it and they were like, i just shown them magic or witchcraft or something. Uh, we've got a two-part drawing as usual. Uh, I think we're going to get on with that soon. Uh, what do I need to say? I need to say, click subscribe, please. I know there's a few of you that haven't. We're hoping to edge towards 4,000 subscribers. That's pretty cool, right? 4,000 of you watching this. That's like an army of art clubbers. Not our clubbers, subscribers. If you're a subscribler, you click subscribe. And if you are a subscribler, you have entitled yourself to the subscribler certificate. Go to the description in this video and there's a link where you can click on it and print it out. It looks like this. And then there's lots of little things that you color in when you've unlocked the achievement. There'll be stuff like wearing stripes and watching Art Club and you get to color that one in. Or if you've sent me a joke on YouTube on the comments, you can then color that one in. So there's all sorts of achievements. So download that and color that in. Uh, click subscribe and do tell people because I want to spread the word as much as I can. So if you've got friends who aren't doing it or if your school aren't setting you this as your homework, tell them. And then we can grow this, hopefully, to... Who knows, 5,000 subscribers next, that would be amazing. So anyway, I think we're ready to get on with the two-part drawing. So grab a pencil, grab a brush, you know how it goes. Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art Club. Right, it's two-part drawing time. If you are new to Art Club, where have you been for the last 10 episodes? But if you are new, what we do at this stage is we start off a drawing and then we finish that drawing off at the end of the show. So we're gonna do the start now. What you need is a sheet of A4 paper and you'll need something to draw with. I quite often use this fat brush pen. It's really nice, it's quite a big thick nib and it's quite a brush pen, so if you do it light, it goes thin and if you press down hard, it goes thick, so I really like this. You can use whatever you like. I always say you can use a pencil, a brush, a cat's tail dipped in Nutella. I don't know, uh, but I'm gonna use this and I've got my piece of paper portrait like this because the drawing we're gonna do today is gonna be this way around. And I don't know about you, but I always kind of think to myself, there must be food out there that doesn't actually want to be eaten. How do they feel? So the drawing that I'm doing today is gonna be one of my favorite foods. 
the humble donut, and I'm kind of taking it from their point of view. They surely don't want to be eaten, so imagine that there was a donut rebellion, a bit of an uprising, and they all kind of all decided, you know what, we're not going to take this anymore, we're going to stand up for our rights, we're not going to be eaten. So we're going to do a donut rebellion. So we're going to start with a circle, it's going to be a ring donut. Now, tip for drawing circles, breathe in, hold your breath, and then draw the circle. For some reason, it keeps your hand a little bit steadier. It seems to make your circle just a little bit better. Make sure you breathe out afterwards, though. So here we go. So just about on the lower half of your page, so circle about there. Perfect. And inside that, we're going to do a slightly smaller circle because this is a ring donut. So now I'm going to do a little face on my donut. He's quite angry as well. So we're going to do two eyebrows like that. And the eyes are going to be here. So one there and one there. And I'm going to do eyebrow there, eyebrow there, little dot there and a little dot there. I'm going to give it a tiny little nose underneath the hole. So I do my noses like that, but you can do yours however you like. And he's going to be angry because they don't want to be eaten anymore. So I'm going to do his mouth like this. And I'm going to give him some teeth. And a little tongue here, like the letter M, that tongue. Now I might switch to a thinner pen. If you have a thinner pen, you can switch to that now. I've got this one here, it's a little bit thinner. And I'm just gonna do a bit of a kind of a line, a bit of a wavy line that goes around the outside. That is gonna be where the icing on the donut goes. I mean, this can be as wavy as you like. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. And if you like, you can also add some sprinkles, some little tiny sprinkles like this. I might just speed this up because this might take a while. If you're watching at home, remember you can watch all of this and not draw. You can watch it and just watch it like a TV show or you can watch it and pause it and rewind it. However you want to watch Art Club. Remember the first rule of Art Club, there are no rules. Now that's your kind of basic donut face. We're going to give it some arms and some legs and he's actually going to be wielding a sword like this. So we'll do the legs first. We'll do one there and one there and then we'll do his little feet kind of just going to one side like that and to the other like so and I'll do this hand first so this arm is kind of he's gonna be sort of pumping his fist a bit so I do one arm like that and then my hand I'll do a thumb and then the back of his hand there, and then a little finger, and another finger, and then another one there. And then we'll do the hand that's holding the sword. He's going to be holding it up high. This one is going to be the leader of a donut army, and we'll do the donut army in the second half. So he's going to be holding his sword. I do the handle of the sword will be coming there. We'll do his thumb going across there. And we'll do one finger, two fingers, three fingers. And I might do the bottom of the sword to be round like this and perhaps put a little gem in there. Or it could be a donut. And then the top of the sword. Curves up like that, and curves up like that, it goes across, and then we do the big pointy bit of the sword, it goes up like that, and then comes back down, and then put a thin line down the middle. You can also put some little lines in the handle there. I might actually put a little in there and there. So that is the first part done. 
Come back in the second half and what we'll do is add in a whole army of donuts and we'll also have this one saying something and I'll show you a cool thing about the shadows as well, that'd be good. Anyway, see you in a bit. What do you get if you cross the bouncing bum with a hippo? A hippopotamus. <laughs> and that joke has come from Stella. Right, I'm hoping this next bit will be really useful. It's quite an interesting thing all about how you write words, which is called typography. <laughs> I probably knew that already. Sorry if that was a bit educational, but yeah, words and stuff like that is called typography. And this is quite useful because I don't know about you, if I'm drawing like a title or a poster or something, I never know how much space to leave. And often I will try and write a long word and I'll run out of room, or sometimes I'll leave too much room and it'll be all squished to one side. So this tip, hopefully, will be really useful and help you to get your words looking great. What we're gonna do first is get a pencil I always like to do my lettering in pencil first and then go over it in pen, just in case I make a spelling mistake or something like that, which I do do quite often. I just say do do. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you is how to draw words on a curve. So what I do, I make a little guide that I'll rub out later and it's a curved line like this. And then I'll do another one just above it like this. This is how high our letters are gonna be and try and follow the same kind of curve. And we'll fit all of our letters touching the bottom and the top of that curve. Now, what I'm gonna do is show you how to do this with a word, a random word, holiday. Uh, so holiday is a H-O-L-I-D-A-Y. It's a seven letter word, which is great actually, because this works quite well with odd. You can do it with all odd and even, but it works really well with the words that have an odd number of letters. So holiday begins with an H. So I start with my H and I do my H so it touches the top and the bottom, goes along there. And now what I do, rather than doing the O next, I do the last letter, so the Y. Now I know I want my Y at the end, so I do that touching the top and the bottom. Now what I do is I count the letters, so I've got H-O-L-I-D-A-Y. The one letter that is in the middle is H-O-L-I. So I, I do right in the middle. That's my I, I do that in the middle. And now I know I need to put an O and an L there and a D and an A there. So I know exactly what space I've got left for my remaining letters. So I'm gonna do my O here and I'm gonna do my L there. I'm gonna do my D here. And then I've just got enough room to squish in my A. And there you go, the word holiday on a curve, very neatly spaced. What I'm gonna do now is show you quite a cool trick with lettering. What I'm gonna use is this brush pen, and if you don't have a brush pen, you can use two different weights of pens. So I could actually, I've got a, a thick pen here. It's not a brush pen, it's like a thick chisel pen, and I've got a thin one somewhere. Oh, there it is. And what I'm gonna do is go over it in my thin one first. I could use my brush pen and do this, and I could just press lightly doing this. When I do the second bit, press a little bit harder. Now what I'm gonna do is take my thick pen and I'm only gonna go over the parts of each letter that is on the left-hand side and make a thicker line. Just join it up like that. If you miss a bit, it doesn't matter. You can just color it in like that. And I'll, I'll leave the O, I'll come back to the O at the end. So the L, you just do this upright bit. So you don't do all of it. You just do the upright bit and if it's a letter like the H, you just do the one on the left-hand side. So the D, you do that. And the A, we're just gonna do this diagonal bit here on the one side. This pen looks like it's running out. Let's get to the end of this word. And with my Y, I think I will do the upright here and I'll do this diagonal here. And with my O, I'm just gonna kind of go down one side here. Like that, perhaps a bit thicker. And that's quite a cool lettering style, a thick and thin lettering style. Right, we're gonna try it out with another word. So for example, we'll use the word moon. 
uh, which is M-O-O-N, that's four letters, so it's an even letter. We'll do this straight along the bottom there. Helps if you've got a ruler. I might just use the edge of this pad because I haven't got my ruler to hand. Oh, I've got my, actually, yeah, I've got my, no, I'll use this. So I'll do a thin line at the bottom there. Don't press too hard because you can rub these out. And I'll perhaps do another line there. And exactly the same thing. We'll start with the letter M, then we'll do the letter N, and then we'll fit the two O's in between. O, O. And I'm gonna use my brush pen for this one. And what I'm gonna do this time is take my thin pen, and similar to this, just do, on the left-hand side, do a line like that and then join it up, but don't color it in, just leave it open like that. And with my O, do a line there, and do a line there. And with my N, just do a line down there, and join it up. And that gives quite an interesting letter style as well. Let's try it with one more word, uh, porcupine. That is P-O-R-C-U-P-I-N-E. That's nine letters. Ooh. Let's draw a line at the top here. And another one there. Now we start with the letter P, there. And we end with the E, there. Now we need to work out what the middle letter is. So it's P-O-R-C-U-P-I-N-E. So it's U is the middle letter. So we'll do the U right in the middle. And now we need to put O-R-C in here. And we know that R is going to be in the middle of that, so we put the R there. And then over here we need to do P-I-N, and I is in the middle, so we do the I next. And now you just fill in the gap, so it's an O there, a C there, a P there, and an N there. And I think I'm just going to go over these in one pen. Hopefully, you can use these tips and tricks to make your own posters. I'm going to add a few more words to this one. Let me know how you get on. Right, now it's time for our one minute artist bit. This week, we're learning about the artist Jackson Pollock. One minute artist, Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock was an abstract expressionist artist born in Wyoming, USA in 1912. His style of painting was often called action painting because he would drip, throw and splash lots of different colours of paint across really large canvases in very quick movements. This painting is called Number 5, 1948 and at one time it was the world's most expensive painting. Jackson is actually Pollock's middle name. His real name is Paul Pollock. Jackson Pollock used to work by laying huge canvases on the floor of his studios and dripping different coloured paints all over them. You'll quite often see footprints in his paintings where he has accidentally walked onto his canvas. Pollock would quite often listen to music whilst he was creating art. This is a close-up from a painting called Summertime. Five, and that four, is Jackson Pollock three, in a minute. Two, one. There you go, that was quite <laughs> educational, wasn't it? Now we're gonna be recreating a Jackson Pollock painting. Now his paintings were quite messy and this might be quite messy. I've tried to minimize the mess as much as possible, mums and dads, but you know, still need to be careful. Uh, and you might want to wear some kind of apron. I really wanna protect my stripes, so I'm gonna be putting this one on. This is like the opposite of stripes. I've got some dots, it's got some nice frills on it as well. This is like wearing your rival football team's football shirt. But I wouldn't want to get the stripes messy and I don't really care about spots. They can get as messy as they like. So I'll just tie that up at the back. How's it look? And what you'll need for this is a shoe box. If you've got a shoe box, great. If you've got any other kind of box, that will still work. I've got a shoe box here. It's quite big. I've got size 12 feet, so I have quite big shoe boxes. 
and I don't want you to kind of see what the brand is. So what I've done is I've crossed out one of the stripes and I've written Adi Doodah there, just so you won't know what the brand is. And I'm gonna use my Adi Doodah box and I'm gonna open it up and you'll see that I've already got a sheet of paper in there. Let me move these sheets of paper to the side. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna make our own Jackson Pollock style painting using a box with a sheet of paper in and some paint. So once you've got your sheet of paper in your box like this, you can kind of set it to one side for a bit and then get your paint. I've got a little tray thing. So I'm sure that's got a proper name. And I've also got some weird little objects that I've collected. I've got some little teddy bear things here. I've got a dice, I've got a golf ball, and I've got a little miniature Hagrid from the popular movies, Harry Potter. I think they made some books as well or something, I'm not sure. What we're gonna do is get our first paint and I'm gonna use this blue here and I'm gonna squeeze a bit of blue. Oh, there we go, it's already a bit messy. And I might water that down a bit. So hopefully I'll be able to get a little bit of this water in there. This is gonna be tricky. Ah, oh, there you go. Already getting a bit messy, it doesn't matter. And um, I'm gonna use the golf ball for this one and I'm gonna pop the golf ball in there and I'm gonna I'm gonna get a paintbrush as well, I think, and just paint the golf ball with some of this blue paint. Might need to kind of mix it up a bit, get it nice and nice and runny, cover it all. I mean, you are gonna get messy doing this, let's face it. And once you've got your object nice and covered in your paint of choice, all you need to do is put it in the box close the lid, or if you haven't got a lid, just be careful, and roll it around so it hopefully will make a kind of a Jackson Pollock style painting. Fingers crossed this works. Move that to one side, move my water, get my Addy Doodah box. I haven't got a clue what this will look like, so hope it's good. I think I'm going to open it up and see. Let me take the golf ball out first and then very gently I mean, that looks pretty cool, right? What I'm gonna do is let that dry, put my box to one side, and then I'm gonna do it again using a different colored paint and perhaps using one of the other objects. I wanna give Hagrid a try, so we'll do him next. I'm gonna clean off my brush a bit and I'm gonna use some red, although it doesn't look that, it looks a bit more pink than red. It's called Permanent Rose. I'm gonna scoop some out. Come on, out you come. Permanent Rose. Ooh. Ooh. Just a bit. Sorry, Hagrid, it's time to be permanent rosed. So Hagrid looks quite covered there. I'm gonna put that lid back on there. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> I'm gonna put my painting, I need the Addy Doodah, I need four arms. I need the Addy Doodah box back. I need to put my paper back in there. Try and get it straight again. I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope Hagrid works some magic. <laughs> there 
There we go, out you come mate. You can sit next to that golf ball. You might want to give your fingers a quick clean at this point. There we go. I need another hand. Put that over there. Pop that down there. Put that back on the floor. I think I might quickly go and wash my hand. Be back in a second. Right, that's my hands a bit cleaner. We're gonna do some yellow now. So I get my yellow, give it a shake. Hopefully this won't be as lumpy. And what I'm gonna use for this one, I could use either the teddy, I want something round actually. So what I might do, you might remember I made the queen out of plasticine for our sculpture edition. What I'm gonna do is rip the queen's face off. There we go. And I'm gonna turn that into a little round plasticine ball. And I'm gonna dip that plasticine ball in my yellow paint and hopefully this will work quite well. So I'm gonna get the Addy Doodah box back. I'm gonna put my sheet back in here and get my little blob of plasticine covered in yellowy paint. I'm gonna chuck it in, close that lid. It doesn't feel like it's rolling as well. I might have to dip again. quick sneak peek. Not bad, not bad at all actually. Oh, there you come. It's the queen's face. And if I peel this out, look at that. Isn't that amazing? It's my very own shoebox Pollock. Try saying that quickly, don't. Wonderful. It would be great to see all of your shoebox pollocks. <laughs> it would be great to see all of your shoebox pollocks. Send them in and use the hashtag OlafArt. Why was the snowman in the greengrocer? He was picking his nose. <laughs> and that joke has come from Olivia. Now, some of you might remember that in one of the earlier episodes of Art Club, I showed you how to make some pop-up cards, which were pretty cool. I'm gonna show you another way of making a pop-up card. It's quite easy. All you need is a sheet of card or paper. Paper will do, but I'm using card just to make it a little bit sturdier. And you'll need some scissors. Uh, do I have some scissors? There's some scissors here. And you'll need some things to draw with, so pencils or pens or felt tip, that sort of thing. It is quite easy. All you need to do is take your sheet of paper and you fold it in half this way. And run your finger along the crease to make a good line there. And then open it up and fold it in half the other way. And again, run your finger along the edge to make a good crease. I use my fingernail to do that. We'll make a little cut sort of around about, not quite halfway, a bit closer to the middle than halfway. And we don't want the cut to be too big. So around about there and there we go. Just a tiny little cut like that. And what I'm gonna do is fold this bit back like this. So it makes a little triangle and fold this bit back so that also makes a triangle. And then I'm gonna turn it over and open it out again and fold it back the other way. So it goes there and it goes there. You might wanna do that a couple of times just to make the fold nice and kind of loose. Now what you need to do is kind of open it out and fold it in half this way. 
So our little cut and our folds are there. And get your finger behind it and just push it forwards like this. And hopefully you should be able to get it so that it opens and closes like a mouth or a beak. And I think this would be brilliant to make a pop-up card of one of our old friends from another episode of Art Club, the Sausage Bird. If you don't remember the Sausage Bird, I'm sure he'll be appearing somewhere around here at some point. What we're gonna do is get my pencil here and I'm gonna draw one eye there and one eye there. And the Sausage Bird is a sausage. draw this kind of sausage body there and I'm going to draw one wing sort of curving up here and going off the side there and a feather and a feather and a feather and a feather and then do exactly the same on the other side One, two, three, four, there. And I might even be able to have his tail coming off one side. You remember he has like a wavy tail of lots of different colors. Now all you need to do is colour it in and perhaps you might want to have your sausage bird saying something. The sausage is a cunning bird with feathers long and wavy. It swims around the frying pan and makes its nest in gravy. And there you go. You can't catch me. I'm the sausage bird. Have loads of fun making your own. They don't have to be sausage birds. They can be anything you like. I'd love to see them. Make sure you share them using the hashtag OlafArt. What's tiny and sounds like a pigeon? A smidgen. <laughs> and that joke has come from Paul Eggleston. Right, you'll remember from the first part of the show, we were drawing that donut who wasn't very happy about being eaten. He had a sword uh, and I said that I was going to do the rest of his donut army. We're going to do that now. So get your picture, put it in front of you and get your pens that you were using. And this donut He's going to be, it's almost like a battle scene from a movie where you've got like a historic battle and they've all charged up a hill and they're going to face their enemy. So I'm going to draw up the hill first and that's just going to be a curved line that he has stood on and he's going to be at the top of the hill. He's like the leader of this donut army. So I'll do a curved line here. And if you want, with your smaller pen, you could do some little blades of grass, which I might do here. And what I'm gonna to start to do is draw some more donut shapes, so some more circles and rings in the background, and I'm gonna turn those into the rest of his army. I'll start here, so I'll just draw, perhaps this is the next one in his army, just do a circle like this, and then put another circle in the middle. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, you can just have the one donut, but I think this works a lot better if there's a scene, if there's a lot of them. And you can do as many as you like. You might just want to do one or two or three, or you might want to fill your whole page up with annoyed donuts. This one's another annoyed donut, so I'm just gonna give him an eye, an eye. And because these are in the backgrounds, you can be a little bit rougher with these. Give him his little nose, give him his face, go, ah. And this one, he might be holding a flag. I think he's gonna be holding a flag. So because he hasn't got to the top of the hill yet, you can't actually see his feet. So just draw some legs like that. And this one is gonna be holding a flag. So I'll do his arm up there, 
a little thumb and some fingers. And again, because he's a background one, you don't have to be super neat because everybody's looking at the one at the front. They're not really looking at all the ones at the back. So you can be a little bit quicker. And I'm just gonna draw a flagpole that goes all the way up like this. Up a line. And then what you do for a flag, you draw a wavy line and then you copy that wavy line, but a bit lower down. And then you join the ends with a bit of a wavy line. And then you can do whatever you want on that flag. I'm gonna draw a donut on the flag. I think the flag of a donut army would have a donut on it. And then don't forget his other arm. Let's just go like that. And that looks great. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fill this up with a few more donuts. Like I say, do however many you want. I'm gonna put this into fast forward because it might take a while. And then we're gonna have our leader shouting something out, some kind of rallying cry to the rest of his donut army. Now, once you think you've got enough of a donut army in the background there, you can have your leader saying something. I'm gonna have mine saying, you will never take our sprinkles. So I'm gonna do that now. I'll write the words first and then I'll do the speech bubble around it. And now I'm gonna start coloring it in. But before I color it in, I'm gonna show you something I'm gonna do with the shadow of the one at the front there. So I'm gonna color in the grass using this green and do it quite quickly like this. And then for the shadow of the one in front, I'm gonna use a darker green and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna have a line coming off his feet going this way. So a diagonal line. And then I'm gonna have another diagonal line going this way. And then I'm just gonna do a bit of a darker kind of curve like that. And what that does is it makes it quite a dramatic shadow. It looks like he's being lit from behind and he's casting a long shadow and it makes him look even more menacing. So I'm now gonna color in the rest of it and I'm gonna put that into fast forward. And there you go, your finished angry army of donuts who really don't want to be eaten. I would love to see all of yours and they don't have to be donuts. Perhaps they could have teamed up with some cakes or they might be fighting against some vegetables. Who knows? Let your imagination run wild. If you would like to win my drawing, all you need to do is go to the comments in this video and type in the very special code phrase, do not poke my donut, it will definitely bite you back. Good luck, and I would love to see your drawings. Make sure you share them with the hashtag OlafArt. Well, I'm afraid that's it. We've run out of time for another art club. Aww. Don't worry though, there will be another coming along next Monday, so make sure you tune in for that. Please make sure you have clicked subscribe, make sure you click like as well, and comment underneath if you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you like. Let me know if you've got a great joke. It'd be great to read some really cool jokes. Also, don't forget to share Art Club. Please share it with as many people as possible. I wanna get over 4,000 subscribers. Oh yeah, make sure you download your subscribers certificate and color that in. I think that's about it, I know. Let's have a quick blast of the parent in a can again. Being a YouTuber is not a real job. Switch this rubbish off and get on with some real work. A little bit of rubbish. Bye!